Welcome back to Farm and Hammer everyone. Before we get started, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone for making this channel what it is. Just past 30,000 subscribers, which is a big milestone for me. At the moment, we're adding 50 to 100 people a day. So, I um, just wanted to say a big thank you to all of you who are still watching and subscribing and liking all these videos. Um, I really appreciate it. When I hit 50,000 subscribers, there will be a big release that I'm pretty excited for. So. Um, hopefully that won't take more than a year, but we will see. If it takes a year, it takes a year. If it takes two years, it takes two years. But that is a plan, a big release coming at 50,000 subs. You guys can tell I'm out in the hay lot. As you guys know, we have a big hay barn and we also store a lot of hay outside because we don't have enough barns for it. But as you know, we were hauling hay. We filled up the hay barn there by the silo. There's, I don't know, a couple hundred in there. And then, We've also got all of these stacked outside. And as you guys can tell, we still have quite a bit of room. We're gonna fill up here. Gonna put some more up here. We have some up there. And we also have a big row right there along the bullpen. So this is just some fescue clover mixed hay. Um, not super outstanding quality, but better than combined fescue. So um, that's why we stacked it outside. It's not our best stuff. For those of you wondering why we stack it like this, there's a lot of ways you can store hay. And as you guys know, we use the hay barn, like I said, but when you're storing hay outside, people sometimes set hay bales on tires, set them on gravel, all that stuff. But for us, the most simple method that we can do here is stack all the bales end to end, and then leave about a four foot space in between the rows. Obviously this one's more of a three, not as big, but this one's a four. But the reason we leave so much space between the bales is it allows wind to come down these rows. And as you guys know, this hay, um, when it rains like it just did yesterday, it holds a lot of moisture and that means humidity and all that. So um, if you have the bales, if we didn't leave a space here and we just had all the bales together, um, the hay would rot a lot faster and there'd be a lot more on the outside of the bale that would not be edible for cows. This much space just allows wind to come in, take out some of the humidity, and hopefully make the bales rot less. Um, they're still going to be, I don't know, six inches of, maybe four or five inches actually, of hay that goes bad on the top and on the sides, especially the bottom, but um, if we had them end to end, that might be closer to a foot because it holds so much moisture and there's no wind to allow it to dry out. So anyway, that's why we stack hay the way we do. Um, there's about 300 bales out here and we still got another three or 400 to get. So, and the hay we're gonna get later is gonna be cut in the fall, which means it won't be as mature as this was when it was cut. So it'll be better quality and it won't have sat out here for a couple months already before we feed it to the cows. I'm not gonna show you guys a lot of the calves today in this video, but um, I have moved them since you saw them last. You might be able to see them on the horizon line there grazing. We got one little one here. Um, but they're out there grazing, really enjoying the fresh growth on all the grass. Since it has rained, a lot of the pasture is starting to recover and really starting to grow again. And guys, what today's video is mostly about, which is kind of depressing for me, is this thing right here. The old John Deere 45. As you guys know, I was combining fescue this summer. I've made a couple videos on this combine this year and a few last year. Last year, it ran pretty well. Had some minor mechanical issues that had to be fixed and we got those figured out. Got like 90 or more acres covered last year combining. And this year, only got about 40 done. I made the last video of me harvesting. And then I came out the next day to start again. Made about, I don't know, two passes here. And I started smelling smoke while I was in the cab. I was like, well, that can't be good. So I shut it off, went to the back. I saw some, a little bit of smoke coming off. So I crawled up there, looked. The smoke was just coming right there. So I was like, oh, okay. Just seed or something blew in there and oil and it was just cooking on there and smoking. So like, okay, that's fine. Started it up again after I cleaned some of it off and started it up again, combined another little line down here and then smoke started billowing out the back and before I could shut it off, the engine shut itself off. 
So for all you mechanics, which I am not one, but if the engine shuts itself off, that means you got a major issue. Anyway, came out and looked at it after it cooled down a bit and oil had sprayed everywhere, which I don't know if you can see. I'll try to do this without falling off. Oil was just dripping and running down the side of the combine on both sides. Um, oil was sprayed all over this and I don't know exactly what went wrong. Um, but whatever it is, the combine had some kind of leak or something, sprayed all of its oil out, and the engine ran out of oil and shut itself off. I said all of that to say this, the engine is seized. On a cheap old combine like this, I don't know what that means for its future. Um, so I did read a little bit online, once again all of you mechanics helped me out here, but um, from what I read, they said basically the engine is shot, but you can fill it back up with oil and wait a while, which I waited a couple weeks, filled it back up, waited a couple weeks, said you might be able to start it again, and it might have soaked in long enough to actually break that free. Um, but we were gonna try that today, it's been sitting for a while. I'm gonna hook the battery back up, see if it'll crank, which I'm sure it won't, but it's worth a shot. Battery is hooked up. Of course, the duct tape got wet. Put the choke on. Okay, everything is ready, I believe. Let's see what she does. Guess I kind of need two hands. Yep. I don't know if you could hear that or not, but the engine is seized still. So, so what does that mean? As I've already mentioned a couple times in this video, I am no mechanic, but I can make some basic repairs. One of those I will show you now. Uh, <laughs> so this belt here, it spins. It sucks everything in to the combine, so it actually has quite a bit of pressure on it, but um, it snapped on me the day before this thing died and fixed it with duct tape. <laughs> it kept popping off after I put it together and then put some more duct tape on there. It ran for another eight hours, so duct tape held up well. As I say, you can fix anything with a little duct tape, so um, I was surprised that stayed together, but it did. Anyway, that's about as far as my mechanical knowledge goes. Just kidding, I can put belts on, just do basic stuff, but I've never done any engine work on anything. It's tempting to haul this thing off to a salvage yard, get 600 bucks out of it, but as you guys know, I put a brand new tire on this side, and that was $500 last year. So, I'm a $500 selling with a $600 combine. Doesn't really make sense. Um, if I could sell this new tire, for 400 bucks it might be worth it but um this is a rare sized tire and they had to order it in anyway so i don't think anyone else is going to be looking for it looking for one that size so since this thing is so easy to work on everything's just right up here at the top um i can see everything i know what everything is it already needs a new radiator new radiator fan all of that it still works but it is currently being held together by jb weld so Need a new one of those anyway, so if I can take that off, take this whole part off, which I've already done, that's not hard. Um, we installed this new water pump last year, um, put this new belt on. So all this side I have worked on, put new things on, that is no problem, I can take it off. This, put a new coil and distributor cap on. All this left here is the engine itself, and since it is so easy to get to, I am wondering, I am tempted to see if I can find a new engine. Take this one out. Once again, I have no clue what I'm doing, but I don't think it looks that difficult. Once again, all of you mechanics, let me know in the comments if this is a terrible idea, but um, I'm wondering if I can just pull this engine out, take everything off, get all the new parts that I need, um, and maybe install an engine myself. We have a big enough tractor. I think it could lift it up here 
and just slowly drop it in and get it settled. But once again, it may be more difficult than it looks to me. But it does sound good to put a new engine on myself and get it fixed and run again. But once again, that may be completely irrational. But uh, anyway, just a thought. So once again, all of you mechanics, let me know what your thought is on getting this thing fixed. Or I should put a new engine in, have it rebuilt. The problem is paying someone to rebuild that may cost, it's gonna cost well over a thousand dollars, but I don't wanna spend a whole lot if I can find an engine for four or five hundred dollars and do it myself. That's what I'm considering. But there's one other possibility that I am also considering. As you guys know, I got this thing for free. Um, put a five hundred dollar tire on it, put a lot of maintenance and just repair costs into it the first year initially. And there's a lot of good parts on this combine. If I sold it to a salvage yard, they're gonna take 600 bucks, sell all of these things, especially the tire. I called them and asked what their tire of that size would be and they said it was like 400 something used. So, um, so they would buy this whole combine for five or $600. First of all, sell that tire for $400 if they could find someone to buy it. They would definitely get their money's worth out of buying this thing. Or, since there are so many decent parts on this thing, if I could find a running John Deere 45, Someone selling for cheap, which I did see last year. I should have bought it. That was my mistake. Um, it was a thousand bucks in perfect condition. It hadn't been run in 10 years, kind of like this thing. But it still ran, had a nice, really nice header on it, um, platform, all of that. It was just a great little John Deere 45, and I should have bought it. But I didn't, because I was like, oh, I already got this one. I'll wait till next year, save up some money, buy a new one. But now I'm considering if I can find another cheap John Deere 45 that runs, has a good engine, this may turn into my own parts combine, maybe. Overall, there's quite a few little parts on here that would be useful if I had another combine. So currently, I am on the lookout for a cheap John Deere 45. Um, so if any of you guys are in Missouri and you have one that's been sitting in your barn for years and no one's used it, or maybe your grandpa has one that hasn't been used in 20 years, let me know and I will be interested in buying it. Once again, guys, all you mechanics that are watching this, please leave your advice down below because I am not a mechanic and I will take all the help that I can get. But anyway, that's kind of some bad news on the John Deere 45. Hopefully I can get something else before next summer. Hopefully another 45. If not, it may be a gleaner. Anyway, sorry for the bad news. It was pretty depressing when it happened because I wasn't done even combining this year. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Once again, thank you for subscribing and liking these videos. It really helps me out and we are on our way to 50,000 subs. And with that being said, I will see you guys next time.